Welcome back to another YouTube video. It's your girl here, Chrissy Chella, and I am so excited for today's YouTube video. But before we get into it, I just wanna say a massive thank you for hitting 1 million subscribers here on YouTube. Thank you so much for the constant love. Thank you so much for the constant appreciation. And thank you for allowing me to help you along your fitness journey. That's literally all I could ever ask for. So thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So I hope you know that and I hope you realize that. In today's YouTube video is based on five must do compound movements that I need you to start incorporating into your training routine. These are five compound movements that you will find on the Strong Program and you will soon find on the lower body strong program coming on the tone and sculpt app which you need to download because it will change your absolute life but it's also five compound moves that I wish I had incorporated into my life sooner it's completely changed my body composition my strength it's made me feel more strong and empowered so we're gonna break each one down with tips tricks and why it's beneficial to you the first compound move we're gonna break down is a barbell squat. Now, in my years of training women online and offline, the one movement they struggle with the most is actually the squat. It can be a bit intimidating. Like, it's a bunch of iron and you have to lift it and there's so much complexity to it and it can be overwhelming. So we're gonna break it down, strip it back and simplify it. I'm gonna tell you the do's, the don'ts and why you should be doing it. So first of all, it's the setup. So right here you have your barbell squat. So stay with me, you might already know this but you might learn something new today. Your setup should tend to be about shoulder width apart or a little bit underneath your shoulder here. So when you're scooping under, it sits comfortably on your shoulder. So you don't want it to be too high because if the barbell is too high, like this, it won't be able to sit on your shoulder and it will sit on your neck. But if too low, you're gonna have to crouch way more down, bring your legs way more forward, and it's gonna be so much harder to unrack and unload. So you have to find the middle ground, which is, comfortably by your shoulders right here. The second thing I want you to know is your barbell should not be on your neck and it should not be just right at the top of your shoulders. You want to hit it in the mid range right here on your trap or if you're doing low bar a little bit lower. So here or here. Never here, never here. You're going to cause a lot of injury. Your hand positioning you wanna keep everything nice and tight. So I would place my hands about shoulder width apart to begin with, come under and tuck them in, squeeze them in just like so. You're gonna unload, walk back. That's your starting position. You see how everything's stacked? Everything is nice and controlled. My wrists are nice in alignment. Sometimes my wrists go like this and that's why I need wrist straps because I'm lifting a load of load. But for the purpose of the video, I need to show you the correct form, not the bro form. Sorry guys, I had to take my top off because you couldn't actually see what I was saying. So as you can see, my, my stance is nice and strong. My wrists are nice and stacked and in control and in alignment. My core, <sighs> nice and controlled. My feet, a little bit further than shoulder width apart. They don't have to be completely narrow and parallel like so. They can be a little bit shoulder width apart depending on what feels comfortable. You're gonna sit down on your squat as if you're sitting down into a nice low chair. You're gonna shoot up with your chest, but you're not gonna lock your knees out. So watch very closely. Sit down. Come back up. Sit down. Come back up. Just like so. Now, what are the benefits of a squat? Now, a squat is classified as a compound movement. What is a compound movement? It's multiple joints and multiple muscles working simultaneously together to lift a load. That's essentially what it is. Why are compound moves so beneficial? It encourages you to focus on hypertrophy, progressive overload, power, strength training, and it makes you stronger. So that's why they're so beneficial. But also it's because they are working your body in a completely different manner than let's say a unilateral move, an accessory move, or an isolation move for that purpose. Squats are a vertical movement, which means you are up, 
and you are down. You are coming up and you are coming down. That is a vertical movement. It is also a knee flexion movement, which means your quads are going to be quite dominant in this movement than let's say a deadlift. Where you place your feet, whether it's a sumo squat or whether it's quite narrow, you're gonna hit those quad fibers much, much more. But the difference between a squat and a deadlift is a deadlift is a hip hinge, whereas a squat is a knee flexion. But either way, the compound is so necessary. It also matters where the bar is. So if you do a low bar, you're gonna target a different area a little bit more than let's say a high bar. A squat is gonna encourage you to lift a load of weight. It's gonna encourage hypertrophy. It's gonna encourage strength training, power lifting. So it's absolutely vital to your training. The next compound move that is absolutely necessary to your training is a deadlift. I encourage you today to go and deadlift. Start incorporating it, start doing it. Tell your friends, tell your grandma, tell everyone to start doing them. I'm not even joking, you gotta you got do them. A lot of people have so many issues when they're doing deadlifts because of their lower back. It hits their lower back and they start getting achy, they start getting pains, and then they don't wanna touch it and they don't wanna do it anymore. It can be really simple when you break it down and you understand that it's not as complex as you think it is. There's different variations to a deadlift. You have your sumo deadlift, which is nice and wide, your feet are externally rotated, and it's nice and deep. You have your Romanian deadlift. Your knees are slightly more bent, more hinge focused here, more glute orientation. You have your stiff leg, where your knees are a little bit more straight, but never locked out. You don't wanna cause severe injury to your knees, so still a soft touch, but it's much more hamstring orientated than an RDL. So there's a difference between a stiff leg and an RDL. One is more glute orientated, one is more hamstring orientated. Then you also have your conventional deadlift which essentially is a bent knee deadlift. Pick it up, come back up, go back down. That one is more of an all body deadlift rather than let's say a hamstring orientated or more glute orientated deadlift. So there's a bit of variation for you. The stiff leg deadlift and the RDL will constantly come up on the Strong Program, the Tonus Sculpt app. So that's the one I'm gonna show you for the purpose of this video. The first thing you wanna do is ensure that your feet are shoulder width apart and in front of the barbell. Your hands should also be shoulder width apart. You can have them slightly inwards. You wanna place your thumb underneath, grip the bar so you have your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, all stacked in one line. You don't wanna do this. You wanna have them all stacked in one straight line. Keeps everything nice and neutral. That's your starting position. Notice how my knees are slightly bent. It's really important to actually release pressure and pain from your lower back. You're gonna keep your core nice and tight by exhaling the air out. <sighs> Retract your shoulders back. You wanna pull the slack first. What do I mean by that? Now this is the most important tip that I'm gonna give you and I wish I told you this sooner. This is slack. Before you are deadlifting, I don't want you to just pull it. I want you to pull the slack first. Meaning, pull the slack out. Can you hear that? And then, lift. There's a difference between just lifting and actually prepping by retracting back, pulling the slack, and then lifting your barbell, just like so. Why? Because you have so much more control in your movement. You're not rushing and you're reloading each and every single rep. Please understand that when it comes to compound moves, each and every single rep matters. So that means you have to reset, you have to maybe reload, you have to retract. It's not just about how quickly you can do a deadlift. It's really about taking the time. Each and every single rep, you're retracting back, you're pulling that slack, you're lifting. And then you're controlling the barbell before lifting back up. Now with an RDL, there's a difference because you don't need to touch the floor. But let's say with a conventional deadlift, you're gonna have to come up, go back down, 
restack, reload. But with an RDL, the first movement is crucial. Just like so. Now when you come back down, you're gonna push back as if someone's pulling you at your heels. You're gonna keep that chin nice and tucked into your body. By the shins here, you're gonna come back up, gently squeeze your glutes, never over hyper extend. Watch that one more time. You're gonna come down, core nice and tight, chin tucked in. That's how deep you wanna go. Bring it back up. The third compound move we're gonna go into is actually the military press. Now, it wasn't until maybe three years ago I started doing the military press and I wish I'd done it sooner. Because just like your lower body days, such as your deadlifts and your squats, it's really important to have those big moves on your upper body days, such as your shoulder press. The shoulder press can be a bit intimidating because yet again, there's a lot of complexities to it. So we're gonna strip it back. It's the best exercise to help target all three delts. So you have your anterior, your middle, and your posterior deltoid, which basically to simplify it for you, it's the outside, middle, and round the back delts. And that's what creates that nice like bolder shoulder that I struggle with for all of my life, but we'll get there. Essentially what you need is a barbell, Similar to a squat, you want it in a position where it's comfortable for you to lift off. This isn't the best squat rack to show you just simply because it's preventing me from offloading the bar the way I want it. But for the purpose of this video, just ignore that ever is there. You're gonna position your hands right in front of you. Your thumb is gonna grip round the barbell, similar to a deadlift, and you're gonna have a nice controlled wrist. So you don't want this here, this flexion here, you want everything to be nice and stacked, nice and controlled. You don't wanna overarch your back when you are performing your reps when it comes to military press. You're gonna cause a lot of lower back injury and also you're getting your lower body too involved. This is predominantly an upper body movement, so your lower body should not be hinged like this. Instead, you wanna tuck your coccyx bone in, squeeze those glutes, keep that core nice and stiff and tight, so all of the performance comes from your upper body. Now, it is gonna be a bit heavy, especially if you are challenging yourself and you're working towards failure. So it's okay if you use your knees for those last two reps. Go easy on yourself. So remember, gripping the bar, that shoulder width apart, nice and controlled, tight wrist, bring it out. Coxit bone tucked in, tight. As you're coming down, you don't need to come all the way down, about here. The next compound move is a bent over row. Yet again, after training so many women, the one exercise that you guys struggle with the most is a bent over row and actually understanding how it's supposed to feel or where it's supposed to go, how you're supposed to perform it. A bent over row is a horizontal movement. So we've been doing a lot of vertical movements from squat, deadlift to shoulder press. They're all vertical movement. That means up and down. Whereas this one is a horizontal movement. So you're targeting them, those muscle fibers in a completely different way. Gonna keep it simple. So bear with me, because I'm gonna break it down in the most simplest way ever for you. A bent over row is, I would classify it as the queen and the king of your back days. That's why on the Toner Sculpt app, you will have some sort of bent over row in your pull sessions throughout the program. You will incorporate these movements. But you can perform it inverted and you can also perform it neutral. Now hand placement plays a big factor on where you're targeting specific muscles. So if you do want a YouTube video on hand placement and grips, comment down below because I think that YouTube video will be very, very interesting. Let me know. And whilst you're at it, make sure you leave a thumbs up if you're finding this video really helpful. It goes a long way, so thank you if you do. With a bent over row for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna actually do a neutral grip. So similar to a deadlift, exactly the same. You wanna grip your bar, but this time you're actually going to bring your thumbs out. Now, why do we bring our thumbs out? Well, your thumb flexes 
and actually contributes a lot towards your forearm. So when you are doing any type of row, our main focus is our primary muscle, which is our back, not our secondary muscle, which is our bicep and also our forearm. So by relieving that thumb, you're gonna focus more on your back rather than pulling with your forearm and your bicep. So that's a little bit of food for thought. So you're gonna bring the weight up, you're gonna bend over just like so. I'm not bent completely over to a 90 degree angle. I'm a little bit more upright just like so. You don't want your elbows to flare out. You wanna tuck them nice and neat. So as you're rowing, you wanna bring your elbows close to your body as possible, just like so. And you want the barbell to be hitting around your hip and belly button region. So let's put all that together. Thumbs out, gripping the barbell, bringing it up. Not a 90 degree angle, slightly more upright. Keep your core nice and tight, chest upright too. Bring in the barbell with your elbows pulling close to your belly button. The last exercise and the last compound move, which I wish I started doing sooner. And it wasn't until maybe 12 months ago that I started incorporating this movement. And I'm so angry at myself for not doing it sooner. And it's because I let my fear get the better of me. And you know, I've done it now, so it's totally fine. If you're allowing your fear to really consume your progress, then you are letting your emotions win. And your emotions are not logical. You have emotions that are going to impair your thinking. You have emotions that are going to give you wrong judgments. And it's because we're scared. I'm scared too. I'm scared all the time when I come to the gym and I don't know how to perform a certain movement. I have to maybe Google it, read something on it, or even try it and mess up a couple times. But honestly, you have to just give it a go. With the chest press, it was one of those movements which I wasn't comfortable doing, I wasn't confident doing, I didn't know how to perform and there was so much, um, so many arguments online. Should you curve your back? Should you not? Should you do this? And there's so many opinions. And look, like I'm a firm believer that an opinion is completely fine, but there's a difference between making someone feel really freaking stupid and not being constructive at all. And then there's a difference between you being a friend and guiding another person. I don't do well with people being rude to other people, to me, to community members. I don't do well with it. But there's a difference between you being constructive and helpful and trying to help another member out. We're all in this together, whether you think of it or not. You're on your own personal journey as person training but you're with everybody else like we're all learning and we're all evolving in our own types of way so let that be a reassurance to you so with the chest press I classified this movement as actually the kin and queen of upper body movements and um, similar to a squat for your lower body days I think of a chest press for your upper body days so the setup is actually way simpler than you'd like to think you want to have your barbell right eye level in front of you just like so you want to grip the bar similar to a deadlift so thumb rolling over the barbell just like this and bringing your wrists nice and controlled there's a lot of argument whether your back should be curved now a lot of power trainers they have a really extensive arch like so but for me i like to have a little bit of a natural arch like literally if I wasn't arching, it would be here. But then if I'm retracting my shoulders back, I get that natural arch. So I don't like to overthink about it too much. I'm scooping low. Your feet placement is really important as well. You wanna push away from the ground. You don't wanna have them completely in front of you. You wanna have them nice and wide. And if you don't feel comfortable showcasing this area, <laughs> then you can put your t-shirt or your jumper in front of you as well. So I'm gonna retract my shoulders back. I'm lifting the barbell. The barbell needs to hit the middle portion of your chest. If you are doing an inclined chest press, you're gonna hit the top of your chest much, much more. If you're doing a decline, you're gonna hit the lower region more. But because this is a flat bench, you wanna hit the middle part more. All right, so, and bring it back up chin nice and tucked it's not the prettiest so bear with and then you're gonna come down lift off back up down lift off back up 
Now remember, when you are coming down, you wanna breathe in. So you're going, when you're coming up, you're powering and breathing out. Breathing is absolute key. So remember, when you are bringing the barbell down, you are inhaling. When you are bringing the barbell up, you are exhaling. Because that's where all the pressure needs to go. That's where you need the most power. Another tip that I'm gonna give you with this is to remove your clips. As you can see here, I'm pretty confident with this weight, so that's why I put clips on. But if I was trying to hit a personal best, or if I, you know, felt a little bit weaker that day, especially for women, you know, depending on the time of the month, our energy and our strength will fluctuate much, much more than men, which I'm gonna have a YouTube video about this because I think it's very important. So I would remove the clips because, let's say this happens, I'm doing well, I'm unracking, I've got strength in me, but then, oh, I can't seem to lift the barbell back up. I can flip the weights and then bring the barbell back up. So you're preventing any injuries from happening. So I would encourage you not to use clips just because you can slide the plates off and then you prevent any injuries from happening. So there we have it, five must-do compound exercises that completely changed my training, my life, my body composition, my strength. And I hope that you incorporate these five movements into your training routine. If you are looking for a structured program and you don't know where to start, I encourage you to download the Tone and Sculpt app. I know I keep saying it and I will say it for the rest of my life because I genuinely believe in this product so much and so do millions and millions and millions of workouts that have been completed by hundreds and thousands of women globally. So the link is in the description box, so definitely give that a go. I hope you found this video useful and I hope, yet again, you have left my YouTube video feeling a little bit more reassured that you're on the right journey, the right path, and you just need a little bit more patience and you just need a little bit more practice like we all do. Thank you so much for again hitting one million. I love you always and forever. I'll see you next time.